All right, folks, what is going on? Welcome to the First and Frame Rate Show. I am BF Baller. Over here, we talk about George South Atlanta Falcons football. And today, we're going to talk about the Atlanta Falcons offseason. It's been a real roller coaster ride for the Georgia Southern Eagles and Atlanta. And in this episode, we're going to talk about the offseason for Atlanta because now, since the preseason game is over, it is officially the regular season, in my opinion. We're going to give a grade for the uh, offseason. Um, I know there's still some more cuts to be made, but um, I'm not going to put that in the fa- in my factor of grading the Atlanta Falcons uh, offseason because I just feel like the job has been done and wh- whoever didn't make it is just what it is. I don't think nobody's going to be cut. That's that significant. That would change my grade. So I'm going to give you my grade and I want your thoughts and opinions as well. Uh, I'm also thinking about doing a Georgia Southern one for the next episode, but we'll get into that as the news cycle rolls around for today. If this is your first time here, welcome. Like I said, this is the first and frame rate show. I could be found on YouTube and Rumble. I'm also on Anchor, Stitcher, Spotify, Apple, and Google Podcasts. If you're listening on the audio side, there is a visual side of this podcast and vice versa. If you're on the visual side, there's an audio side on of the podcast as well. So you can listen at your leisure and uh give me your feedback uh also if you want to uh donate or you want to support the show all the links are down in the description every little bit helps it's just a one-man show but if you're just here listening that is cool too it is not a requirement it is just a suggestion if not i'll still be here making the best content possible all right let's go ahead and get into this i have and i'm gonna have the link down in the description as well i have the transactions from January 1st up until the 26th of August. And I think that this is where I'm going to give you my thoughts and opinions on all the stuff that stood out as far as what transactions made. And I'm going to give you a final grade on what the Falcons have done. So I'm going to get into this and uh, give you my thoughts and opinions. All right. Uh, Anything that I see so far, Parker Hess was activated from the roster on one um, January 4th. Matt Barkley was actually on the team <laughs> at one point as a practice squad member. That's interesting. Dorian Etheridge was, uh, they activated him from the practice squad on the 7th. Trying to see if there's anything else here. I don't, I don't want to go through every, every uh, transaction, but I just want to see which ones that stand out. Um, Let's see. We have... Matt Gano was released at the time. Everybody, you know, kind of saw that coming. Then you had the uh, Calvin Ridley situation on the seventh. He was on the suspended by commissioners list. Young Way Koo was resigned. Olama uh on the fifteenth gave the uh, Falcons gave him the right first right to re- the right of first refusal contract tender, and uh, we end up resigning. Um, I'll take that back. Let's back up a little bit. We end up uh, releasing Tyler Davis in that same day. The next day after that, on the 16th of March, we end up uh, signing Jake Matthews to, to a three-year contract. Got Anthony Rush on a one-year deal. Elijah Wilkerson to be to be uh, to be's. T's Tabor was signed on the 17th. Dame Williams was signed on the 18th. Isaiah Oliver was re-signed. Casey Hayward was signed all on the day of the 18th. Matt Ryan was traded on the 21st of March. So that's really interesting. For a third round pick, that was the D'Angelo Malone pick. So that's really interesting. Uh, Let's see. On the 22nd, we end up re-signing Cordell Patterson and signing Lorenzo Carter. Cordell Hodge was signed three days later on the 25th, as well as Marcus Mariota and Eric Harris. Um, Quadri Allison was re-signed on a one-year deal. On the 28th, as well as Auden Tate. Um, Dean Marlowe on the 31st was signed to a one year deal. Let's see what else we see here. Uh, on the 6th of uh, April, Rashad Evans and Jermaine, uh, Jermaine Fetty were signed. Uh, Anthony Fursco was signed on the 12th of April. And I think Anthony Fursco is going to be a pretty good tight end for us. I think, I think he's going to be really, really good. And uh, so uh, that was a pretty good pickup right there for a one-year deal. Olamar Zacchaeus was signed on the 19th to a one-year contract. Then from the 28th all the way to the 30th, 
that's where all our draft picks were picked. Um, on the second of May, we did a lot of changes right down there. One of the standouts we did end up signing was Jared Bernhardt. We also signed Tyler Vrabel and a whole bunch of other guys that were um, unsigned free agents. Uh, let's see. On the second as well, Mike Davis was released. Uh, John Fitzpatrick was signed. He signed his contract on the 12th. Drake London also signed. Tyler Algier also signed. Justin Schaefer also signed. Two days later on the 14th, we end up getting Brian Edwards. And uh, we gave away, uh, oh, we also got a seventh round pick. And we traded away a fifth round pick. So that was pretty much, I felt like that was a steal. Because Brian Edwards is going to be really nice for us. Um, Kendall Shatfield was released. I, I kind of felt Kendall Shatfield was going to be released because he, he had a lot of cap, um, cap, uh, weight on him. The Falcons ended up signing Geronimo Allison, Trey Webb, which ended up getting cut later on and Tucker Fisk. I think he's still on the team. I'm not really sure. Um, uh, D'Angelo Malone was signed on the 23rd. Uh, Troy Anderson was signed as well. With Troy Anderson being signed, John Kaminsky was released. Jeremy Nichols was signed to a one-year contract on the 26th. Uh, and two weeks later, he was released. It's really interesting. All right, let's see if we can find anything else that stands out. Desmond Ritter finally signed his contract on the seven, on the 19th of July. Um, Deion Jones was on the uh, active, uh, on the physically unable to perform list. Darion Daniels was signed on the 27th. Uh, let's see who else we see here. Michael Pruitt was signed on the 9th of August. Uh, I'm trying to see anything. Uh, Keyshawn Johnson, key K E E S E A N, was signed on the 17th. Geronimo Allison, uh, Auden Tate, and Lafayette Pitts was um, released on the 23rd. Um, if I want to back up. And Fisk was re he was signed and he was released, and I think he ended up getting signed again. It was kind of weird. Yeah, they re-signed him on the 26th, which was three days ago. Um, Deion Jones was picked up on the uh, Deion Jones was picked up uh, off the P of the pup list on the 24th, and the last one we see as of right now that uh, Rick Leonard was waived uh, as on the 26th as well, and Tusker Fisk was signed on the 26th. So. With all that being said right now, that was a lot of moves. I hope you kept up with all of that. I tried. is a lot more moves, but there was some stuff that I just, uh, you know, pretty much talked about the ones that I felt that stand out for the most part. And um, not only with all these moves that was made, you know, I think these moves was really good, but the culture of the team, from what we've seen in the preseason, the culture of the team has changed significantly. We have a really good looking team right now. It may be inferior to the other talent in the NFL, but we are in the building blocks of making something special. I think Marcus Mariota and Desmond Ritter look really good in this offense. I think Desmond Ritter still has a little bit more polish to work on, but I think he will be just fine. As the more reps he get, the more practice he gets, the better he gets the understanding of being a pro. I think he'll be fine. You look at everything else on the team, this team looks much more physical. I looked at the defense, how they was getting out the tackles and getting at the players on that front seven. And like I said about the thing with Deion Jones, I felt Deion Jones could fit in this defense perfectly. Even though he was like second in the league in tackles last year, it just felt like he was out of place at the end of the day. But now it seems like he's going to be right where he needs to be. The secondary looks good as well. And all this other stuff, um, as far as the defensive line, they're actually looking good as well. I mean, you got Grady Jarrett and you got Lorenzo Carter and Epiquete. I mean, how could you not look good with that type of talent? Offensive line looks much more solid than I thought they would be. And um, they actually surprised me a bit. They didn't give up too many uh, sacks or they didn't have uh, Mariota or... Um, or Desmond Ritter hurrying in the pocket. They, they But only on that, but those guys are pretty, you know, mobile as well. So it's not hard for them to take off if need be. So I guess that's another plus when you have a defensive or well, offensive line like this. And uh, it, it, I think the team is coming together. It's going to look pretty good. Week one versus the Saints, I think it's going to be 
I think we're going to be able to shock a lot of people the way we play because the preseason, the preseason. But I think we're just going to do a little bit better in the regular season. And it's just going to start against that. Now, if I have to give a grade, and I know it's something people was asking about, if I have to give a grade for this off for this off season, I definitely have to give a grade of B plus. I, I don't want to give an A all the way because uh, I feel like that the way it was handled was A because they did it with professionalism. But if you look at the talent versus everything that's happened, I think they get a solid B plus for their off season. I think it was a really good off season. The team looks different. The, the, the team is actually um, more physical and look like they're ready to hit somebody. They're not afraid to play, you know, tough. Cause we was always been, uh, you know, classified as a finesse team. Not anymore. I think we're going to be hitting some people in the mouth and I think it's going to, going to surprise a lot of people. Now, one more thing I will say before I get out of here is that I would have gave this an A or a higher if we would have had some blockbuster signings. But I understand why we did not because we were strapped for cash. We didn't know what, what the whole situation with um, Matt Ryan. He was holding the team down by a large margin. Now with him going, we got to weather the storm for this year and uh, basically get things together for that bigger uh cap space for the following season i think we're going to be doing pretty good for the most part so um like i said b plus solid b plus i think this team is on the way they're on the upward trajectory to be a really good team i cannot wait to see what happens against the saints and i like i said i think this offseason was really really good i am thoroughly thoroughly impressed with what they've done now I don't think they're going to go very far in the season. I know some of my people who listen to this show was projecting nine plus wins. I don't know because I watched a couple other teams as well. And uh, it could, it's doable. Don't get me wrong. Mm -mm. Excuse me. Don't get me wrong. It's doable. But will it happen? I'm not really sure. I'm not. I just have to really see this team in the regular season after two or three games, and I'll definitely give you my opinion of where it goes because I see them win, winning eight or nine games, but this team is still of a, of a mystery. You don't necessarily know what's about to happen with this team. So we're going to see how that all plays out as it unfolds in the first few weeks uh, of you know the season. If you like this commentary, hit the like button, share this podcast, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. What is your grade about the Fort Atlanta Falcons offseason? Do you think they get an A plus? Do you think they get an F? What do you think they're going to get? Like I said, I give them a B plus. I think the offseason was very, very good for the Falcons. And it looks like we got the right coach. It looks like we got the right GM. And as of, as of right now, the personnel on the field look like we got them as well. It's going to be, you know, uh, really interesting to see, you know, how that all plays out. All right, I am going to get up out of here. Thank you guys once again. I am on Anchor, Stitcher, Spotify, Apple, and Google Podcasts, YouTube, and Rumble as well. If you want to donate into, uh, or actually support the channel, all the links are down in the description. And I'm going to get up out of here. Enjoy your Monday, and uh, I'll be back on Tuesday with another episode. All right, y'all. I'll take it easy, and y'all be blessed. Peace.